Well, my next guest hardly needs an introduction. For years, he was the chief meteorologist at both CARE 11 and then later at WCCO Television. He is also a columnist for the Star Tribune. He has founded numerous companies, including Weather Nation, and is credited with inventing software used by meteorologists across the world. Paul Douglas has co-authored a new book called Caring for Creation, The Evangelical's Guide to Climate Change and a Healthy Environment. And it is just awesome to have Paul Douglas back in our studio this morning. This looks familiar. I, well, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. And uh, congratulations on the book. Why did you write a book uh, specifically addressing evangelicals and conservatives about the issue of climate change? We, we need some unity. We have to find some common ground. The book is really a bridge, an attempt to reframe the climate story in a way that resonates with a big percentage of Americans who self-identify as evangelical, Christian, and so, I mean, you can pile on the science. At some point, people tune out the science. More science doesn't necessarily convince them of anything. But if you frame this under the guise of clean energy, energy freedom, energy security, you know, we're moving in a clean energy economy. We're moving in that direction. And oh, by the way, there are a lot of benefits, lower cost, more good paying jobs. And we're also going to be cleaning up the air and doing something good for your kids and your grandkids. It's framing the story in a way that resonates and appeals to people's faith. Let me ask you, because uh, I've known you a long time. I know that back in the 90s, you know, there were a lot of people who really had a lot of questions. I know that you had some questions. Many people did. As far as the science, what do you say to those, who, many people, good people, who are skeptical? What does the science say as far as you're concerned? It, it, at this point, it's overwhelming. We have multiple strands of evidence. It doesn't rest on any one thender, uh, slender thread of evidence. We've had a 40% increase in CO2. Uh, this year, warmest on record worldwide, warmer than last year. Four of the five warmest years have been since 2010. Uh, and we're seeing it, whether it's rising sea level, longer growing seasons. Farmers come up to me, Esme, and, and some of them are afraid to call it climate change, but to a person, they come up and say, Paul, it's changed in my fields. It's not the same. It's not what I grew up with. This year, we had a 220-day growing season in, in Minneapolis, St. Paul. Wow. That's typical for the northern suburbs of Dallas. So. You know, one snapshot in time doesn't prove anything, but you string all these snapshots together into a longer running movie and you see the form of something emerging and there's now no question. And I'm not the only meteorologist who's pointing this out. And I highlighted some of these other TV meteorologists around the country who are becoming increasingly outspoken. And I tried to point that out in the book that what I saw in the late 90s, others are now seeing. From a religious perspective, though, I think you would really lay out the case about that this is what our stewardship of, of the earth is important to all people and especially to people of faith. You know, in, in Matthew, you know, Jesus said, what you did not do for the least of these, you did not do for me. You know, we're, we're really empowered to care not just for ourselves and our families. We're supposed to care for everyone. And those with the least, the poorest among us, are the first to feel the impacts. Close to 200 million people worldwide live within three feet of sea level. For them, this is not just some existential exercise. It's going to be impacting their lives, water shortages, too much water, not enough water. Can you go crops? Uh, where can people live and thrive? You know, what we're seeing now in Europe with the refugee crisis may be just a, a preview of what's coming if we, don't, if we don't get serious about this. Well, you told me in an interview on CCO Radio that you really feel climate change, there are going to be some winners and some losers, right. and in an odd way, Minnesota will likely, in your opinion, be a winner here. Not to right. I absolutely believe that Minnesota will be a net winner, but there will be some bumps along the way. Uh, the pressure on agriculture, again, much heavier rain in the summer. Uh, this flip-flopping back and forth between drought and flood. New invasive species, you know, what impact will it have on fishing at some point if the lakes continue to warm up? You know, will you be able to catch walleye on Minnesota's lakes? I don't pretend to know. It's going to put pressure on our ecosystem, but compared to Arizona, California, Florida, 
Texas, Louisiana, Minnesota is going to be in pretty good shape looking out 20, 30 years. The problem, is, Esme, is that much of the planet, it's a net negative. And it's, it's going to be flavoring all these other challenges that we have worldwide. This is why the military takes it seriously. They call it a threat multiplier. I think we ignore this at our peril. I ask people, do you love your kids? And people say, of course I love my kids. I say, well, do this for your kids and their kids because they're going to have questions and they're going to wonder what you did. Did you sit on your hands and do nothing? Or did you at least pay attention? Well, Paul Douglas, it is just awesome to have you back here. And the book, uh, really a unique perspective and argument in, in terms of the debate on climate change, although many people would say there is no debate. But uh, obviously, uh, caring for creation available everywhere, books are yep. sold. Absolutely. Okay. Well, thanks. Thank it was you, great Esme. to see you. Appreciate it. All thanks. right.